if the average listener is just paying, say it's 10 bucks a month for the sake of it, 120 bucks a year to get every single song they could possibly listen to, how, how can Apple or Spotify possibly pay every single artist their fair share? So I look at it more so not as a revenue source, but a marketing tool at this point. You know, get your music out there, get it, get it on these platforms that everyone's listening to because then you have a better chance of getting in front of a fan who might potentially buy some merch or come to a concert or whatever it may be. Welcome to the Marketing Boost Solutions Podcast. Join host Marco Torres along with expert guests as they deliver incredible proven solutions to your marketing challenges in each power-packed episode. Welcome to another episode of the Marketing Boost Solutions Show, where today we will dive deep into the business, as we always do, business, sales, and marketing. I'm your host, Marco Torres, and today we're joined by a very special guest, born in a military family. Matt's early life was a journey along the East Coast, and a journey that uh, not only shaped him, but also led him to the vibrant music scene in South Carolina during his college years. It's there that Matt discovered his true calling, which is music. Blending modern country and country rock and country pop, Matt has carved out a niche with his distinctive sound. His music is a rich tapestry woven with acoustic and electric guitars. And at the heart of every song is a story waiting to be told. Inspired by icons like Riley Green, Cody Johnson, and Morgan Whalen, Matt's songwriting puts storytelling front and center capturing the essence of country music and experiences that inspire it he's going to be at the event we just talked about earlier at the patriots fest and uh, so today we're going to get to know the man behind the music explore his creative process some of the business processes of the music industry and of course maybe listen to some of his incredible tracks so sit back relax and enjoy as we talk to Matt Oakley. Matt, say hello. How's it going? I, I gotta say that's probably the best introduction I've been I've been given over the course of doing all these interviews. So I feel I feel like I'm ready to get in the ring. Go start take some swings, oh. man. <laughs> and you're gonna be up on stage Saturday at Patriots Fest. I'm uh, super excited to be. Uh, I want to be at that event, and part of the purpose of me filming this right away is to promote it live in our Facebook groups our community and see if we can get some more of our members to the event. Um, but tell us a bit about how you got into the music space, Matt, and then we'll talk more about Patriots Fest in a little while and about your music. But what made you, uh, you know, that college career and how you got in the band and so on and so forth? Yeah, definitely. I think the one thing I always say where it started a long time before that, not the actual process of making music, but just being around it. My dad um, always had music playing, whether it was around the house or in the car or doing little music trivia games on road trips. Um, we were just always around it. And so it became one of those things where it was like subconsciously a part of our our life all the time. Like even when music wasn't playing it, in our heads, we're like, oh, I, next time we play music trivia, I want to be I want to be the best. So I'm going to go and I remember these songs and who they're by and what the lyrics are. And so we were just always around it. And then um, when I went to college and obviously when you go out and you go to these dive bars, especially where I was in Conway, South Carolina. So um, music was always playing, whether it was live or whether it was just out of the stereo system. Um, and it, it is just always such a big part of my life. And it was always around. And when COVID hit and I was home, uh, I just had too much time on my hands and we had a piano uh, in our house and I just started messing around with it and learned a couple chords so I could play some covers and then, uh, started writing my own music. And over those next couple years, while I was finishing out college, me and a couple buddies just started diving into it a little deeper and it, and over time it got to where it is now. Cool. Now, one of the kind of things I want to talk about a little bit is I don't know much of anything about the music industry. I mean, I was a musician early as a kid, I played the saxophone and I played the guitar and I, I played in a rock band at age 13, and that was uh, an amazing part of my youth there was, you know, having playing it. I remember a couple of memories that never gone away. We played it at all girls Catholic mm -hmm. school and uh, me and my band, we were all guys up on stage. And I mean, the girls were going, I felt like I was one of the Beatles. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> all these little girls were just screaming and hollering for us. And we were like young kids ourselves, you know, 13, 14. 
it was uh it was out of control but uh anyway in your case you get tell i mean how do you in how difficult is it to make money to turn it to make it a real business in the in the music industry today so i still and again the reason i asked this question is our community is of uh you know, 30,000 some odd entrepreneurs in our Facebook group alone, plus, you know, all of the other audiences that we have. But uh, so they're mostly entrepreneurs and digging and looking for, you know, how do we succeed as entrepreneurs? And obviously being a musician, you're an entrepreneur. So you've, you've got to figure out how to get in front of the next gig, the next song published. And so I'm just curious, how do you, you know, what's the process? Yeah, so I think the process, a lot of it relies on, um, I mean, you want to try, you always want to try and make money where you can. But I think in the beginning, it's a lot of learning. You know, it's 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 very similar to, I mean, so I went to school. Uh, I was business major with a concentration in entrepreneurship. So it's kind of lended itself to what I'm doing here with the music. So um, I think in the beginning, it was in the same way that if you had an idea for a product, you wouldn't just immediately make it in one week and then go put it on the shelves and try and sell it. You want to trial and error. You want to see what works, see what people like, show it, show it around to people. And so that's kind of what I did with the music was I didn't, I never tried to put too much out or get too much out there or do too many shows until it got to a point where the music felt like people would enjoy it. And I think it really goes down if it's, if it's a business conversation where we're, where we're leaning towards, I think it's a lot of supply and demand type thing. You know, if people don't like your music, then you're no matter how many people you get it in front of, you're not going to make a whole lot of money and you're not going to get a whole lot of streams and you know, which lends itself to it being shared and, and, and concerts and merch. And it's a snowball effect. So I think once in the music scene, once you get um, the product where it needs to be, which is the songs and I guess your brand in a way, um, then it's all about networking and meeting the right people and, and getting the music out the proper way. And um, I think we've been able to do that. Uh, it definitely took a, a little bit. Um, I've been at it for about, two or three years now full force um and i love it i've just loved every second of it i've never tried to it's never been like a, oh how can i make how can i squeeze every penny out of this it's there i have a love for it um but pairing that love for the music with my uh um business background if you will has lended me to carve out a, a niche for myself as far as um making it a business making myself and the music a business in itself Cool. I want to take a minute and just play one of my favorite songs of yours, The Richest Man I Knew. Awesome. This, and then I want to hear a little bit about how what this story is about and how you wrote it and or where it came from. Hang on a second. Let's play. Do it. What a voice, man. What a voice you got.
That's beautiful. So is that about your dad or your granddad? So that's about my grandfather. Um, I actually wrote it with my I'm dad. Sorry. I'm sorry. Whoop, whoop. Anyway, excuse me on that. No problem. Um, you were saying about your granddad? Yeah, so that song was written about my grandfather. Um, it was actually inspired by a post that my father posted on Facebook when he passed. And it was about how uh, my grandfather wasn't the wealthiest guy. He didn't have a ton of money. He was um, just an honest, honest man who taught my dad and all of his siblings his morals and, and the way that he wanted to live his life. And it carried on to me. And um, he ended that post with he didn't have much, but he was the richest man I knew because of all the things he taught me. And I was like, that's a great concept for a song. And so uh, one night I was in the studio and I just started messing around and, and I landed on um, that chorus as far as like he taught me to all the things he taught me and just fly through them real simple, like real storytelling. And um, I, I got a little head start on it. And then I called my dad and I was like, hey, who better to help me write this than you? If it's going to be about my grandfather and about your dad. And so he came over to the studio and we wrote it. Uh, it took us a couple hours, but we got we got it written. And then um, one of our one of our one of my uh, producers, he we sent it to him, and we were like, "Hey, can you build around um, this kind of melody and this chord structure?" Um, and he took it A to Z, and and that's what you just heard right there. So it's it, it's it's a process into making it, but I think it always it always starts with a good story and always starts with a good concept. And so the what better concept than something that you know i was directly impacted by by my the way my grandfather lived that's fantastic let's take a quick second and talk about patriots fest coming coming up this saturday the 18th of may if you happen to be in the chicago area you're going to want to try to get here make it a uh, may 18th i will be flying in from florida i look forward to being here and meeting everybody uh just talk to your talk to your dad all about this and it's you know, with a name like Patriots Fest, the first thing that comes to mind to many people out there is, oh, what, is this a Trump rally? Or, you know, I understand you're even getting negative press from the media about it. <laughs> what is the goal and the mission of Patriots Fest? Let me hear it from uh, from you. Yeah, definitely. So um, I like I like I know you, you probably know because you said you just recently spoke to him, but I grew up in a military home. My dad was in the army for 22 years and growing up, whether it was going living on the base and going to all these events they had on base. And ultimately when he retired, we would do a bunch of um, uh, fundraisers and charity events. And I was never able to help participate because I was, A, I was so young and I didn't really have much to offer in, in the sense that I do now. Whereas um, the entire goal for this event is to bring awareness to those who serve. Um, it's not, it's, it has nothing to do with any political bias it's strictly uh, a place where we can go play good music, recognize some of our veterans uh, and bring awareness. And I think we've gotten off the the beaten path as far as um, the appreciation of what it means to these people and to our country for those who serve. Um, and we just wanted to take a day and highlight all of that and show the, we got some great artists who are all coming to, uh, like I was just saying, in a way that they all have their own thing that they can bring to the table and say, Hey, this is what I do. And I want to dedicate a set or a day to it, to just showing my appreciation for those who serve. And so that's all the event is. There's no, there's no Trump rally aspect of it. There's no, regardless of what your political party is. I think when you really take a step back, you can find appreciation for people who completely give up their life um, for strangers and for, and for the love of this country. And there I've met some amazing people through my father and I'm very grateful for it. And so the ability to go up there on stage for 30, 40 minutes and, and play some songs and show my yeah. appreciation is, is really important. If you're here watching this today on YouTube or elsewhere, you're going to want to click and watch the other interview I did with uh, uh, Matt's father, Philip Oakley, who is a, a veteran with an amazing story and the, one of the founders of the Patriots Fest uh, idea. And his mission is to unite us again back to... Uh, uh, you know, September 12th, how we all felt on September 12th, 2020, where we were, uh, uh, we were all united again, United States of America. And this event is all about supporting the military, the first responders. Now, I believe you added in and uh, you're now uh, honoring first responders, the police and fire department, as well as Navy SEALs, Green Berets, veterans. 
and uh, from both the Gulf Wars, even some World War II veterans are going to be at this event being honored. Some of the music, I mean, look at the, the layout, guys. Uh, three Doors Down, Ted Nugent, one of my all-time favorites, <laughs> Big and Rich. Uh, well, you want to talk about any of these guys here yourself here on what the, who you're sharing the stage with? Yeah, I mean these are these are legends, and like you said, Ted Nugent's a legend. Three Doors Down is uh, I I don't want to put out a favorite, but that when when I found out they were they were playing, um, the idea of just sharing the same stage as them, I, you know, I grew up listening to them, and um, I'm really excited to not only get through my set, but then a couple hours later sit there and, and realize I was on the same stage as you know this is a band that not only myself but all my friends and everyone grew up listening to. So it it it's kind of like one of those moments where when I'm done with it and through with it on the back end, last year, I, I played a few concerts and and one of them um, had a bunch of big artists and that, that first moment of being like, all right, we're, we're on the right path. And so I, I'm, like I said, I'm grateful, but it's also one of those things where it's like, I know why everyone's there. And so the fact that all these artists um, have, have signed up to show their support for those who served is, it just feels really cool. Yep. Yep. As you can see, you know, Cowboy Troy, uh, the Moon Joins, Creed Fisher, and of course, Matt Oakley will be on stage here as well. Uh, Brandon Hart, do you, uh, have you met all of these different artists as well? Do you know some of them? I've met a handful of them, and I do want to give a shout out to Brandon. Brandon um, Brandon, and I write a ton of music together. He he, and I link up anytime I go up to Nashville and, and we get some rights in or we just kick it, and he's a real good dude. And so, um, as well as... Uh, obviously, I, I mentioned the legends, but as far as the up and coming acts, the one I'm looking even more so than mine is Brandon's. He's got a killer voice. He's he's a great dude. And so uh, if you're watching this and want to go check out some of Brandon's stuff, he he's a great guy and he's got great, great music. So I'm really looking forward to his his set as well. Cool. Again, guys, this event is uh, at the Piazza in uh, Aurora, Illinois uh saturday the 18th starts at about 11 a.m i think it goes till 10 or 11 at night so it's a full day event um and uh you can get tickets i think they start at 50 bucks or 80 bucks something like that and if you're not uh if you can't make it we want to encourage you to because this is all about supporting these three official charities that support uh veterans and uh, you can donate. One of the ways you can participate is buying a ticket that will be used to invite uh, some of the first responders in the Chicago area. So by you buying a ticket, you're going to let somebody else come. And the money from this is all going to uh, or supporting these local nonprofits. It's time to wow, surprise, and impress your clients with the most powerful customer draw card available anywhere. The Marketing Boost Solution Show is brought to you by Marketing Boost, where you can get valuable travel and restaurant incentives to drive your leads from prospects to paying customers. Now you can offer complimentary hotel stays in over 130 destinations worldwide. Go to marketingboostsolutions.com and try it for free right now. Let me get into another a little bit more about Matt Oakley here. Let's play another tune of yours, Matt. Let me see if I can get it up here on the screen. This one is your most recent one, I believe. What do you want to tell us about this song? Is this is this the dog song, I think, here? Yeah. Yeah, this is the Can't Take the Dog song. So this song was written about my parents. I'll be brief on the summary, but uh, uh, when they when they split up about 15 years ago, they let the kids decide who they went with. But the biggest argument was over who got the dog. And so uh, I was sitting in the studio. Like I said, this was 15 years ago. And uh, about a year ago, I sat down to write a song. And I was like, that's another good story right there. So this one, this one's another, like I said, it always comes from a storytelling true aspect of it. So this is, this is a, one of my favorite ones. So I'm glad to get it out. Cool. Let's hear it. Keys her wedding ring. Ain't it funny how people change? I told her she could take the whiskey, take it all, take the bourbon, I'll take the laws, take the pictures, take the frames, hell, take the walls. But you can't take the dogs. Yeah, I'm taking them with me. I got them boys up in the backseat. You can go and take. 
Couple weeks after that, guess she got lonely in the aftermath. Not having them boys around. I guess she realized that she had it made. Now she's got twice as many bills to pay. Hell, I'm taking them boys to the grave. Now there ain't a damn thing to say. Yeah, I'm taking them with me. I got them boys up in the back seat. You can go and take whatever you. Tell you all and talk about the things that you did wrong and how you can't take the dogs. Yeah, I'm taking them with me. I got them boys up in the back seat. You can go and take whatever you want, but you can't take the dogs. You can even take the six train. Don't come saying you miss me. You can go and take my last name. Awesome, awesome audio there. Thank you. Awesome tune. So Thank you. Uh, now that you're, I was talking to your dad, and I believe we, um, one of the things he brought up was it was a little bit different in the real story. He got you, but didn't get the dogs or something. <laughs> and he probably made some corny joke about how he wishes he, he got the dog and could give it to you. Him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he got like, the worst. Oh. He got the short end of the stick. He got you instead of the dogs. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I'm just kidding. Um, so, so you'll be again, folks, if you're listening here, Saturday uh, the 18th, he'll be one of the guys on stage, Matt Oakley with Patriots Fest. You know, and talking to your dad about Patriots Fest, he was saying very clearly it's not a political rally it's uh, not about Democrat, Republican. It's about God, country, and family. If you believe in God, country, and family, and uh, not ashamed of the American flag anymore, you know, nowadays it's some people are, are for some odd reason, uh, you know, triggered by the flag. I can't believe it. But anyway, most of us are right down the middle. We're like, hey, you know, we're still Americans. We're still proud of the American flag. We still celebrate the 4th of July. We still celebrate freedom and we still celebrate our veterans and our first responders. And this event is all about that. Get together, celebrate and honor our veterans. Uh, uh, Philip uh, Oakley will be uh, doing a book signing as well for his new book. Uh, and uh, that'll be at the event as well, Saturday the 18th in Aurora, Illinois if I said that properly. Mm -hmm. So again, last night, it's not a political rally. It's get out and have fun with family and folks. We'll be there all day long until 11 o'clock at night. Uh, I hope to be interviewing some of the people live at the event and broadcasting that if I could figure out my new mobile podcasting tools. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, we'll hopefully uh, be able to do that. Uh, Matt, tell us more about... Um, about your journey, where you hope to go next. Where is Matt going next as far as his goals here? Yeah, so I'd say, I mean, I can two-part this. Where is Matt going physically? I'm I'm moving to Nashville in a month. Um, the past year has been spent going back and forth. I live in Tampa currently. And uh, we've, we've spent like the last nine months, I'd say, going back and forth, finishing up this album that we've been working on. And we, we finally are at the end of it. And 
it's one of those things where it's like, it feels so good to be on the back end of it. But now that we have this, we want to treat it with the respect it deserves and get it out properly and, and get it in front of the right people. And um, we've got a bunch of stuff set up. And so over the next couple months, every six weeks, um, we're dropping a single that is going to ultimately lead up to the entire album. I'm not sure exactly how many songs are on it. I know it's going to be between 10 and 15, somewhere in there. Um, we got to narrow down which ones we want, get the order right, get all the get all the outlets set up and stuff like that. So um, all that is I, I, I'm pretty on top of putting it out on my socials as far as what to expect. And so all that's just as easy as you'd find anybody else. It's Matt Oakley Music. And um, yeah, so I'm getting up to Nashville and just chugging away at finishing up some song ideas I've currently got making new ones, getting, getting the ones we've already got finished out and uh, doing some shows, doing some interviews and just being really in the thick of it for the next 12 to 16 months. And so uh, I'm really looking forward to it and I can't wait to uh, do some more shows. We had to kind of slow down the show route once we were in album mode, as people say. Um, but now that we've got it, I'm looking forward to getting back out there. And, and that obviously starts um, this Saturday in Chicago, in, uh, not Chicago, in Aurora. Aurora. So that leads me to the question that I'm still, you know, in my days in early on in life, I, you know, I've, I've always been a music listener. Like you mentioned your dad, music playing in the car, in the house, yeah. and whether I'm outside on the deck by the pool, I got music on all the time from all kinds of genres of, of all kinds. But, you know, in the old days you had, we had to buy albums and obviously the artists made, had a chance to make money on album sales as well as uh, live concerts and what have you. But, uh, how does that work today? I mean, no, very seems like nobody buys or people don't buy as many albums or CDs as they used to, or yeah. it's all going on streaming. And mm -hmm. uh, how do you get your fair share of revenue from that in in today's music world? I'd say uh, you don't really get your fair share from the streaming platforms, um, but all that sets you up for concerts and merch and all these things. You get if you can get into the and we're starting to get up there in, in streams, which is nice. And the music's being uh, pushed out to the right people and people are liking it and sharing it. So that's, that's a good feeling. Um, but I'd say, I mean, things like Apple and Spotify have made it so easy. You pay five to $10 a month and you get every single song that's ever been released versus if you, in the back in the day, if you liked an artist, it was pay 20 bucks for this album and the artist right. gets, uh, the majority of that or the label or whoever it might be at the time. But nowadays it goes directly to the streaming service and the subscription standpoint and you're paying. Um, they, It's not on, it's not, I don't put it on Apple or Spotify for paying their artists what they pay. It's like, they don't, they need to make money too. And if the average listener is just paying, say it's 10 bucks a month for the sake of it, 120 bucks a year to get every single song they could possibly listen to, how how can Apple or Spotify possibly pay every single artist their fair share? So I look at it more so not as a revenue source, but a marketing tool at this point. You know, get your music out there, get it, get it on these platforms that everyone's listening to, because then you have a better chance of getting in front of a fan who might potentially buy some merch or come to a concert or whatever it may be. Um and well, yes. that, that that sort of explains why concerts are so much more expensive than they used yeah, to. It's true. And and people associate that with the artists, but like the artists, the, it's like you said, you go from CDs and album sales and all these, and now it's a click of a button. And so, um, but yeah, I'd say focus on using the streaming platforms more so as a marketing tool and a resource rather than a direct revenue stream, because you'll make way more money going and doing a 10 show run and having a booth of your, of your clothes or your merch set up and, and make your own money that way and finding ways to, like we said in the beginning, turn yourself into a business in a way. So that's been a, that's been a weird thing to navigate, but I don't think there's a way to get your fair share on the streaming side anymore. So just use it and, and pivot. Yeah. I've, I've always been worried about it when I saw, I mean, it come about, I'm a user of the streaming services, Pandora and Spotify and, YouTube music and uh, depending upon which, you know, area I want to watch your videos or I want to do, but, and I pay for the services, but they're so affordable. It's like, it's not fair. I mean, just, uh, there's just no revenue for it. I, I you, mean, would so think that, you would think that that would affect negatively affect the creativity of, you know, more artists getting into the game because it's so hard to, 
but maybe not. I don't know. That's what I'm that's gonna... that's why you see artists like Morgan Wallen dropping a 36 song album because people can go play. They don't. It's not just one song. It's not just eight songs on a project. It's that he's giving you so many that you can listen to over and over and over again, and that gets his uh, stream count up. And so, I mean, he he Morgan Wallen is an animal. He he puts out music. He's always been, put out music a ton at a time or a lot over. Uh, he's an animal. I have a lot of respect for Morgan Wallen, but um, you also look at other artists and you you can't just drop two or three songs a year and lead up to a project. It's like you got to be dropping 10, 15, 20 songs um, and constantly giving people new material that they can stream over and over. And I think that's the best way you can set yourself up for success. And then uh, uh, so really, it's about, you know, getting the streaming, getting the awareness and then the live events. Yeah, uh, mostly. Um, so how does that affect the writers? Are they uh, yeah. are writers getting paid now or is now that everybody got to write their own music? Um, you, you still you still do the whole writers thing, hop into a room and throw some ideas around. And, and the whole if you if you get a line, you get you get a chunk of it. So, I, I mean, it's all baked into it. I'm obviously on. I write, I write with, I either write my own songs or I write with a team of writers or I write with my guys. And um, I've never looked at it and been like, oh, I want to write a hundred percent of my own music only. It's cause it's like, you kind of touched on the creativity side of things too earlier. Um, I think you can get more creative with, with a couple more people and pick other, cause like my perspective isn't the right perspective. It's just a perspective. And so if I've got a couple more people in there, so I'm not entirely sure. I haven't dove too deep into uh, writer's credits and how they get paid out and where they get, where that comes from, whether it's streaming or whether it's the master or, or what it might be. Um, but what I will say is if I got to a point in my career where I'm making substantial amount of money and I feel like people have written on songs that have helped me get there and getting their fair share, I would, I have no problem going back and figuring out how to, you know, write that ship. So I think a lot of that might fall on the artist on just, be a good person and, and look after them if it gets to that point. But like I said, I don't, I don't know too much on the writer side of the house as far as splits go. Well, cool. Well, we're back to let me let everybody remind everybody Patriots Fest is this Saturday, October 18th in Aurora, Illinois. Um, it's an all day event. You can buy a ticket for yourself or you can donate a ticket to a first responder to attend. And, um, uh, uh, there'll be another event in September. So if I know it's late in the game that we're promoting this to plan anything if you're not in the Chicago area. So uh, there's going to be another event in North Carolina, another Patriots Fest that Marketing Boost is proud to uh, support and uh, sponsor. So uh, Patriots Fest in September. We don't have the exact date yet. Somewhere in North Carolina. You'll know more as we get closer to that date. But uh, we'd love you, your participation, Marketing Booze members, to uh, either join us there, meet me in Chicago. Uh, I'm flying in from Florida. We'll be there for a few days after the event as well. So I'm hoping to maybe uh, get together with a number of Marketing Booze members. If you're in the area, give me a shout out. Uh, get tickets here at PatriotsFest.com. And one more thing, don't forget to look up Matt Oakley, guys. Uh, Matt Oakley, go look him up on Go look him up on YouTube, listen to his tunes, download and uh, listen to him and support him as well. Matt, your music was awesome. I love that song, Can't Take the Dogs, mm -hmm. as well as your other, The uh, Richest Man I Know. Both of them are powerful songs that, uh, and I'm sure you got a whole bunch more, as you said, another album coming out here any day. Yes, so, sir. Anything else you'd like to share with us or have our community know where to meet, find you? I think you've got an Instagram page as well. People can go follow you on. Yeah, I try to make it as easy as possible. If you, you go on my Instagram, Matt Oakley Music, you can find a link to whether it be Spotify, Apple, Amazon Music or YouTube or music videos or press articles. I, I try and put it all up there. So um won't be too long winded. It's just Matt Oakley Music. And if you want to check some more stuff out, go ahead and, and hop on there. Cool. Well, again, Thank you for um, thank you for sharing your insight today, your music with us, and I look forward to meeting you on Saturday, you and your father on Saturday in Chicago. Sweet. I'm looking forward to it. All right, my friend. Thank you so much for being here. And again, see you soon, folks. If you like the content we brought you, please, if you're new to Marketing Boost, 
take a, a subscribe, like, and share this with others. If you don't know what Marketing Boost is yet, and you're listening to this for the first time, guys, we provide you, we serve business owners around the globe with the wow, surprise, and delight factor. We make it incredibly affordable to give you the rewards, perks, and incentives you can use to enhance whatever your call to action is, whether it be getting somebody to book an appointment with you, give them a complimentary you know, a hotel savings card or restaurant savings voucher for showing up on time for a Zoom call or for buying product B to go with product A, a million ideas. We teach you that. Join our Facebook group with over 31,000 other entrepreneurs that are using the Marketing Boost incentives to help grow and scale their business. So check out marketingboost.com and we'll see you on the next episode of the Marketing Boost Solutions Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for listening to another episode of Marketing Boost Solutions Podcast with your hosts, Captain Marco Torres. Now it's on you. Take the next step now. Go to marketingboostsolutions.com for more on how you can wow, delight, and surprise your clients with the most amazing draw card on the planet. So stay thirsty, my friends. Stay thirsty for knowledge. See you next time.